National Silver Company presents the Silver Theater. Starring Helen Hayes in Crossroads for Two, an original two-part story by today's Lewis and Hubble Robinson, adapted for Silver Theater by True Boardman and directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you in behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware, International Sterling, world-famous salted silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel bidding you welcome to the first of two New York performances which celebrate the return to Silver Theater of that brilliant star of the American stage, Miss Helen Hayes. And now our play is about to begin. The house lights dim and the silver curtain rises on Act One of the two-part drama Crossroads for Two, starring Helen Hayes as Brenda Mason, with Carlton Young as Steve Carr and Roberto Bomberg as Pablo. The premiere of a new play has just come to its end. And as the curtain falls and the last of a score of curtain calls... Brenda, it was beautiful. You've got a hit, Brenda. Oh, thank you. You're grand, all of you, and the swellest cast to work with I've ever known. <laughs> and now, what time is it? 11.20. Good Lord, I'll never make it. Excuse me, everybody. I've got a train to catch. Well, well, what about the train? Where are you going? Brenda. Oh, Miss Brenda, that show tonight. Well, I want to tell you. Don't tell me later, Ellen. I just have time to make it if I don't change. Hand me that coat, please. Oh, yes, sir. Brenda, Brenda, you're decent. Oh, it's Miss Barton, Miss Brenda. Yes, come in, Lee. Brenda, my dear, the superb. Uh, what happened to you tonight? You're outdoing yourself. And not even Brenda Mason has the right to be better than Brenda Mason. <laughs> it did go all right, didn't it, Lee? All right, with 20 curtain calls? Well, half of Washington's out there to meet you. Do you know that? And I've got... Wait, Miss Brenda. I'll be right there. Taxi. Lee, darling, this is the one night I can't meet anyone. I'll be back for the show tomorrow, but I've simply got to catch the 11.30 for New York. New York? But why? For just about the most important thing that ever happened to one Brenda Mason. Yes? I, um, I meant to tell you before, but, well, somehow I haven't told anyone. I, I've adopted a son, Lee. You? Brenda. He's a refugee, a nine-year-old war orphan from Barcelona. I found him through the former Spanish consul in New York. Then you've never even seen the child? No. His boat docks tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. That's why I've got to go now. I don't intend to have Pablo arrive in America without his brand-new parent being on hand to meet him. Now, wait a minute. You're not going down to meet that boat all by yourself. Why not? I seem to do a great many things for myself. <laughs> well, not this. I'll come to New York later tonight. I'll fly in. If you become a foster mother, that ought to make me sort of a foster uncle. Oh, Lee, that's wonderful. And you can bet you're elected. <laughs> what did you say? I said, why is it that... What? I said, why is it that the last ten minutes of a ship's arrival is always four hours long? It's because... Oh, so that's why it is. Brenda, you're shivering. Are you cold? <laughs> I'm scared. Scared stiff. Any minute now, Senor Ortega will walk down that gangplank with him. Oh, Lee, what if he doesn't like me? You know, it must be awful traveling all the way across the Atlantic, wondering about the person who's going to be your new mother. And maybe I won't be the kind of person he imagined at all. And of course you won't. You'll be a lot finer. Do you suppose you'll know any English? Or will we just have to stare at each other? Talk sign language? Now, look, will you stop worrying? No. <laughs> Brenda, why are you adopting this boy? After all, there's been nothing to stop you from, well, marrying the right man and having children of your own. Mm -hmm. Nothing except the absence of the right man, Lee. And as for my adopting a child, why shouldn't I? I've got money, success, all any woman could ask except one thing. Someone who needs affection. Someone who needs me. If I were only nine and spoke Spanish. Uh -huh. Look, Lee. They're coming. Senora Tate and Pablo. Hey, this is going to get me. Look, at the first sign of a weep out of me, kick me or something, will you? Yes, but then who's going to kick me? Oh, look at him, Lee. 
He's beautiful. Easy now, Brenda. I'm all right. Oh, Miss Mason. How do you do, Senor Ortega? This is... Yes, this is Pablo. Hello, Pablo. How do you do, Miss Mason? And thank you for bringing me to America. I love America. You darling, you do speak English. Como? You see, I was afraid you wouldn't, Pablo, and that I couldn't make you understand how glad I am to have you. I, well, I am afraid he still does not. What he said was a single speech that all of them were taught on board. As yet, he has but little English. Chiquito, you are this English? No, senor. Hablo poquito. No puedo quedarme aquí si no hablo inglés. Sí, chiquito, no te molestas. He wants to know if he will be sent back if he cannot speak more English. Oh, tell him no. I did. And he will learn quickly. You engage the governess I suggested. She's at my apartment. Then there should be no difficulty. You may take him now. I shall have to contact you later regarding the final legal details. And now I must see to the others. Adios. Adios, Pablo. Adios, senor. Goodbye, Mr. Ortega, and thank you. Well... Uh, we'll go now, Pablo. Uh, we're going home. Do you understand? Home? Si. Home. Comprendo. Do you want to take my hand? Como? I have not words. Oh, Pablo. If your heart is anything like mine, we don't need words at a time like this. This is it, Pablo. This is where we live. Si, senora. Lee, he's so quiet. Do you suppose... Will you quit worrying? It's all new to the youngster. You going to have him stay here? Uh, until the player comes into town next week. The governess will sort of help him get adjusted. Mercedes! I'd like to take him down to Washington, yes, but... Miss Mason. Mercedes, this is our Pablo. Oh, buenvenido, Pablo. Gracias, señorita. Me alegro. Pero tengo miedo que la señorita está enfadada porque no habla inglés. He says he thinks you're angry because he doesn't speak English. Oh, but he mustn't think that. Pablo, come here. It it doesn't matter, Pablo. Tell him that. No importa que no habla. And I'm the foolish one because I'm grown up and I can't speak his language. Oh, Pablo, darling, I don't care... Mercedes, why does he turn away from me? Spanish children are often so Miss Mason. It's nothing. He is maybe a little afraid as yet. Of course. Uh, let, let's show him his rooms. Come, Pablo. This will be your bedroom. Sober, Pablo. Si, comprendo. What's this on the walls? Hmm, a regular mural in miniature. The Adventures of Don Quixote. I had Carl Miller paint it. And los muros. La vida de Don Quixote, no? You recognize it, Miss Mason. <laughs> Rocinante is falso en color. Oh, but he says Don Quixote's mule is the wrong color. Oh, <laughs> I'll have it changed tomorrow. And now, this is the playroom, Pablo. Everything in here is yours, just for you. What did you do, buy out a toy department? Does he like it, Mercedes? Why doesn't he say? Como le gusta. Pablo. Como le gusta. Pablo. Oh, Pablo. I, I'm sorry, Miss Mason. Oh, wait a minute, Brenda. But I've got to go to him. Oh, that's the one thing you mustn't do. If you really want to know, Pablo's crying in there. And the last thing in the world he wants is for you to see him doing it. Crying? But why? Any idea how you would feel if every crazy dream you'd ever had suddenly came true? I don't know. There's something in his eyes from the first moment I saw him. A sort of fear. Or or even resentment. I've got to lick it, Lee. Pablo and I have to be friends. Otherwise, nothing will have changed for either of us. We'll, we'll both just go on being lonely. <laughs> show, 
Oh, sell out business or not, unless you start taking care of yourself. You're on the go all day, every day with Pablo. The zoo, the circus, the fair, Spanish lessons. You can't do that and play a strenuous part every night. It won't do, But Brenda. it's working, Lee. That look in his eyes, it's nearly gone. I think he's beginning to be really happy, Lee. Really and truly whole kit and caboodle happy. Why, that son of mine will actually break out laughing one of these fine days. You mark my words. But, but Brenda, listen. <laughs> can't talk now. I have to go home to him. Good night. I came here three times today to find you, and the last time I decided to stay until you came home. Pablo went to bed once, but he got up again to keep me company. Well, that was very considerate of you. Well, as a matter of fact, it was. From what he tells me, it's about time the kid did something he wants for a change. Really? Who are you? I'm Stephen Carr. Look, the senor. He brings to me esta medal. What is it? A medal. The Distinguished Award for Valor of the Spanish Government. It was of my father. You knew Pablo's father? We flew together in Spain. You flew? Oh. Oh, I see. Here, Pablo, here's the medal. It's, it's very fine. Tell her what it says. El murio porque los hombres. Yes, he speaks not Spanish. It says, he died because men cannot live in chains. See, si, for the liberty it is good to die. Right, Pablo. Please don't talk to him like that. Uh, Mercedes, you'd better take Pablo back to bed now. Si, senorita. Good night, Pablo. Good night. Good night. Buenas noches, Pablo. Mr. Carr, I believe you've accomplished whatever you came for. And now... You don't like me very much, do you? Why? Because I made Pablo laugh? How many times have you heard him laugh, Miss Mason? I wish you... I, you wish I'd go, I know. But first, you should know this. I was with Pablo's father when he died. He made me promise to find the kid and adopt him. Adopt? Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Carr. But Pablo happens to be mine, and I wouldn't think of giving him up. Besides, I don't know anything at all about you. You've suddenly turned up here out of the blue. Out of Spain. Very well, then, out of Spain. And I'd have been here sooner, except that I was helping to fight a war. You knew there was one. Yes, I did know. And if there's anything I hate worse than war, it's outsiders who can't wait to get mixed up in the fighting. I read about that somewhere, Miss Mason. You gave an interview. I've given a great many. I do whatever I can for peace. It's rather a lost cause, but not to me. You fight for peace, is that it? Work for it, yes. It may sound odd, but I like to think I do the same. It does sound odd. We can't decide this tonight. But I'm glad to know you believe in settling things peaceably, Miss Mason, because I'm going to do everything I can to take Pablo away from you. You see, I've got an idea that what the kid really needs is a father. Don't let those interviews of mine deceive you, Mr. Carr. I'm not a pacifist about things like this. You'll find that out if you try to get Pablo away from me. I'll give you a good fight, Mr. Carr. And I'm ready to start whenever you are. And so the curtain falls on Act One of Crossroads for Two. The poet rises on the second act. The act that will bring an answer to one of Brenda Mason's most pressing questions. I'd like to answer a question that was asked over 200 years ago. Mr. Shakespeare wanted to know what's in a name, remember? Well, we could tell him the names do mean something. They have associations. Those of you who are familiar with Rachmaninoff's prelude in C-sharp minor or Richard Wagner's famous prelude to Lohengrin will agree that the name prelude is rich in beautiful associations. In the past, it's made musical history. And in the present, it's making silver history. For ever since its creation in the early spring, this newest of international sterling, solid silver patterns, has been winning first place in the hearts of women who seek perfection in all its forms. And this is why. Prelude, ladies and gentlemen, is a pattern that in a very special way expresses the new romantic mood of today. Its lines are soft and rhythmic, and the cluster of roses which forms the prelude ornament has an indefinable charm a richness and elegance that will make your entertaining memorable. Yes, prelude is exquisite as a fantasy, and yet it has, too, the enduring beauty of the truly genuine. 
For Prelude is sterling silver, solid silver through and through, that will enrich not only your own life, but become a precious heirloom to your children's children. So remember that name, Prelude, the most sought-after pattern in solid silver today. The Silver Curtain rises on the second act of Crossroads for Two, starring Helen Hayes as Brenda Macy. Three hectic, anxious weeks have passed for Brenda with Steve Carr trying in every way to assume custody of Pablo, Brenda's adopted child. Then finally in the courtroom of a Supreme Court judge one afternoon... A certified copy of the decree of the Spanish court allowing my client, Miss Brenda Mason, to adopt the child. It is completely in order, executed in accordance with the necessary... Was written by Pablo's father, Your Honor, a soldier dying in battle. It says that I was to find the boy and look after him. Oh, Your Honor, when I'm touring in a play, I am out of town for long periods of time. But at least I'm in this country. Mr. Carr's all over the world fighting for any country that happens. Having heard the testimony and examined the evidence, this court is convinced that Miss Mason has and should retain legal custody of Pablo de Corsea. Mr. Carr, unless Miss Mason permits you to do so... You must make no further efforts to see the child. Mr. Carr! Mr. Carr! Wait before you go. Yes? I... It wouldn't be honest to say I'm sorry. There's one thing, though, I'd like you to know. I won't give Pablo to you, but I want you to feel free to visit him whenever you wish. Well, that's a pretty quick switch, Miss Mason. I'm a realist, Mr. Carr. I have... Pablo legally, but there's a lot more to this than wherefores and whereas is. He's still talking about your visit with him that night. You're, you're the one real bond he has with his father, and that's important. And Mr. Carr, I have a farm upstate. I'm going there this weekend with Pablo and the Barton. I'd like you to come too, if you will. Well, that's very decent of you under the circumstances. Then you'll come? I think you might like it. it, it it's quite a change. There's even a cow. A cow? Well, when you put it on that basis, when you lure me with a cow, well, that sells me, Miss Mason. I'll be there, and thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Carr. Sleep all right? Perfectly, thanks. Are you always up at this hour of the morning? Well, it seems my son comes from a long line of early risers. <laughs> Since I've so little time to be with him, I've started turning out early, too. Right now, he's taking the car down, cow down to pasture. Uh, let me help with that digging. No, I... Here, don't... give it to me. Why, what's the matter? It's nothing. It's a little crazy, in fact. What is? When you took that spade away from me just now, it... Well, have you ever had something happen... And just at that moment, you get a flash that the identical scene had happened some time before. Sure, I know what you mean. It hasn't, of course, just a, a retroactive imagination. At least, that's what they taught us in psychology. Where'd you go to school? Kansas State. When I went, that is. Half the time, I was hanging around airfields or trying to put old jalopies together. I'm still at it, too, more or less, only now it's a new kind of combat plane. Oh. I tested the ship in Spain, but it wasn't sound. So now I'm making changes. If they work out all right, I'll take it abroad and try again. You'll fly for some country while you're doing it? Sure. Which one? Oh, I don't know. Maybe China. Maybe some little European nation that's either got to build up its air force or else. Or else what? Or else some big friendly neighbor will take it over. War happens to be your business, Mr. Carr. Please don't make it Pablo's. You think I would? Why not? You seem to enjoy fighting other people's wars. And you're not satisfied with the planes they already had to kill people... You're devoting your life to perfecting a better one. You've pretty well made up your mind about me, haven't you? Yes. As it happens, my own father was killed in the World War. I learned then about needless destruction, and I've hated it ever since. So while you're my guest here, I ask you not to talk to Pablo about war or any of your deadly little mechanisms that make it possible. Will you agree to that? All right, Miss Mason. It's a bargain. And now, do you suppose we can have breakfast, or aren't your guests allowed to talk about food, either? <laughs> On the contrary, Mr. Carr, I often say a man's best friend is his breakfast. <laughs> now, 
Well, Pablo, here's one of those dilemmas that faces every croquet player. You can either try for the wicket or hit Miss Mason's ball. I think the wicket, no? Well, you'll have to figure out your own strategy, Pablo. But, of course, if you did hit Miss Mason's ball, you'd have two chances to make the wicket, and then you could hit her again right after you went through. And that, I suppose, is letting him plan his own strategy. <laughs> It'll make a man out of him. Mm. Now, put your foot on the ball, Pablo, and smack it into the woods. <laughs> oh, Mr. Carr, you think of everything. Ah, it's been swell, Miss Mason. I don't mind admitting I hate to leave. But why do you? The Bartons and I had to go, but you can stay and visit Pablo. Spend the week. We'll be out again after the show Saturday night. See, si, Senor Steve. Senor stay. See that you read there. <laughs> Hello there, Philip. Miss Mason, I thought you were going to stay in town on show night. Couldn't do it. A week at a stretch is too long away from that young caballero of mine. Think I'll start commuting. Good. He's been missing you. Has he really? You're not just saying that. No, of course not. Why wouldn't he miss you? Then, then you don't still think I'm a complete bust as a parent? No, I don't. I guess I was wrong about that, Brenda. Thanks, Steve. Good night. See you in the morning. So, you see, Pablo, when people say, what is a picnic? You say, sandwiches, sunburn, potato salad. And red ants. <laughs> and this is what I meant when I talked about quiet paddling. Regular Indian style. Can't even hear a swish. Now listen. Pablo. <laughs> He's asleep. Yeah. <sighs> Swell day. Swell night. Well, where's that music coming from? I don't know. Somebody's radio across the river, I guess. Want me to paddle? No, that's my job. You lie still. Don't forget, you have a show tomorrow. Uh huh. Brenda. Hmm? What are you thinking? I wasn't really. Just looking up at the stars and, well, wondering about the person who made them and this river and this night. Boss architect. Uh-huh, exactly. The boss architect. He must be very proud of designing a night like this. I've seen a few other designs he couldn't be very proud of. Maybe those weren't his fault. Whose were they, then? No, I'm afraid even the boss architect makes a lot of mistakes. For one thing, he put the North and South Poles too far apart. The North and South... Oh. Oh, did he, Steve? Didn't he? I'm not so sure. Oh, Brenda. Senor Steve? Oh, Pablo. Estamos, I mean, we are near to home, yes? Already, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> yes, son. We are near to home, yet already, perhaps. Tucked in. Warm enough? See, si. I'm enough warm. When it's not just Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia? Pablo, you never called me that before. Steve, he said to me that I should now call you so. Uh, good night, Pablo. When it's not just. And sleep tight, darling. See, si. very tight, you like, Steve. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Yeah. Oh, I'm nearly forgetting. My plane, Steve. The little letter plane you gave to me. I can have it to sleep with me, no? A plane? It is there, Steve, by the window. You see, Mamma Mia? Why, it's a lovely toy, Pablo. A transport plane. No, no. It is like the one the Senor Steve and my father were flying to shoot down the enemy. But it is better, faster. Oh. 
Mama. Brenda. Uh, you stay here, Pablo. Brenda. Don't say anything. Just let me alone. Look, Brenda, I broke the promise I made you. I know that. But it was unavoidable. I've been working nights out in the barn on some small models of my plane. Pablo found them yesterday and begged for one. After all, what harm does it do? It does a great deal of harm. Pablo doesn't see that plane as a toy or a model. It's the real thing to him. And it brings back all the memories I'm trying to make him forget. And you think you can? I know I can. But not if you keep all of it alive for him. Not if you keep reminding him of Spain, of his father. His father who went up in the air to kill men, but he got killed himself instead. I suppose you'd like to train Pablo to fly too, so he can shoot down some other man, or a dozen men. And you could train him. Who better? It's your trade, your living, it's your life. Brenda, listen to me. No, I don't want to ever listen to you again. All right. Have it your way, then. Your prim, proper, pacifist way. And lock Pablo up somewhere so he'll never read a newspaper or hear a radio. That way he won't know what's really happening in the world. And he'll think you're grand when you make your little speeches for peace with all the rest of the talkers who do nothing. I'm beyond that now, Brenda. I've seen people killed. Women and children. Animals, too. And it made me mad. Fighting mad. So I'm trying to do something about it. That's my job. A man's job. And it's about time I got back to it. I agree with that. It's more than time you left here. There's a train in half an hour. That's fine. I... Brenda. Goodbye, Steve. And I'd rather you didn't see Pablo again. You needn't worry. I won't. Goodbye. Oh, Steve. Mamma mia. Senor Steve. He's going away? Um, yes, Pablo, Senor Steve. He uh, has some business to attend to. He will not even say adios? No, he won't even say adios. Mamma mia. You cry. I'm sorry, Pablo. Because of Senor Steve, you cry? No, Pablo. Just because... Because the boss architect made the North and the South Poles so far apart. Well, we hope you enjoyed tonight's performance of Crossroads for Two... And that you'll be back to your radios next Sunday to hear the stirring finale. We hope, too, that you'll remember what we told you about International's new prelude, Sterling. For believe me, ladies and gentlemen, few of your possessions can give you the feeling of background, the inner satisfaction and pleasure which Sterling silver can give you. Because the beauty of Sterling is permanent. It's solid silver, through and through. Standing beside me now is a young man who can answer your most down-to-earth questions about Sterling silver. Be sure to listen to him. All right, Frank Gallup. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you would have sterling silver in your homes today if you realized how easily and practically it would fit into your budget. For instance, a formal dinner service of prelude sterling, complete for 12 or 24 persons, can be purchased out of income like your radio or automobile. Or you can start a service with single place settings as low as $16.75 apiece. A place setting consists of six finely wrought pieces, luncheon knife and fork, salad fork, butter spreader, teaspoon, and cream soup spoon. And there are other payment plans which your silverware dealer will be glad to explain if you'll drop in and see him tomorrow. So take advantage of his friendly invitation. Remember the date, tomorrow, Monday. Remember the pattern, International Sterling's New Prelude. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, Helen Hayes, Carlton Young, and Roberto Bomberg will bring you the moving finale of our two-part drama, Crossroads for Two. Next week also will mark the last of these Silver Theater broadcasts for this season. So be sure to be with us, won't you? In the meantime, remember, if you want solid silver, you want international sterling. If you want silver plate, you want 1847 Rogers Brothers, both proudly created by International Silver Company. Original music on tonight's show was scored and conducted by Mark Warno. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Company presents the Silver Theater.
starring Helen Hayes in Crossroads for Two, an original two-part story by Therese Lewis and Hubble Robinson, adapted for Silver Theater by True Boardman and directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you in behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware, International Sterling, world-famous solid silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel welcoming you to the final performance of Silver Theatre Series of Dramatic Productions until next fall. And tonight, as last week, we are happy to have with us that truly distinguished actress, Helen Hayes. The house lights dim and the silver curtain rises on the concluding episode of Crossroads for Two, starring Helen Hayes as Brenda Mason, with Carlton Young as Stephen Carr and Roberto Bomberg as Brenda's adopted son, Pablo. Our scene, the private office of Lee Barton, Brenda's manager and oldest friend, on a morning in July. I'm not trying to argue you out of anything, Brenda. I'm all for taking the play on this European tour, and I want you in it to guarantee the investment. And Lee, why must we rush things so? I want to keep working, Lee. I don't like not having anything to do. Uh, it's ten whole days since the show closed, and you're bored already. Oh, no, that isn't it. I love my days with Pablo, and not having to rush away from him every evening, but... Golly, after he goes to bed, then I... Well, I just want to keep working. Well, no, no, why don't you be sensible and go over the farm for a couple of weeks? Oh, that's no good. It's worse up there. Isn't it a creep? Well, you've hardly seen the place since... Well, that is... Since Steve went away. That's what you were going to say, wasn't it, Lee? Well, why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you talk about Steve? Pablo and I do often. Well, I think it's a shame you've let Steve spoil the farm for you. That's my fault, not his. He made the place so pleasant by being there last spring that now when he isn't, it just doesn't seem as attractive. It isn't any more serious than that. <laughs> no. Well, all right, Brenda. I'll do whatever you say. Ah. Uh, then we'll go to London, eat lo- Yorkshire pudding, and maybe even play before the king and queen. Uh, excuse me. Yes? The London call, Mr. Barton. Mr. Corner. Oh, yes, yes. Put him on. Hello. Mr. Lee Barton? Yes? London calling. One moment. That's Connors, Brenda. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello, Frank. Lee, old man, how are you? Oh, fine, Frank, fine, never better. Well, it's all set, the whole European tour. Open on London the 20th. What about Brenda? Oh, Brenda's definitely decided. She's right here with me now. Put her on, will you? Of course. Brenda. Hello, Frank. Brenda, I'm delighted you're coming over. London needs a good play and a good actor. I bow, Mr. Connors, all the way across the Atlantic, I bow. I mean it. <laughs> I think, Brenda, I read about your adopting a child. Penny. Yes, a war orphan. I'll bring him along. You sure to do that. Thanks. What about the war situation? Oh, nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Everybody's too scared of everybody else over here to make the move. Well, that checks with what I've been hearing. As a matter of fact, the situation may stay as it is for years. And then you'll be so old... You have to make your London debut in the character house. <laughs> All right, Frank. You want to talk to me again? No need. No details. Goodbye, Brenda. Have a good crossing. There you are, Lee. In fact, there we both are. Now, grab your hat and come along. Where to? Today's Pablo's birthday, and he's certainly not going to celebrate it without having his foster uncle on hand. Oh, but why didn't you tell me? Because I was afraid you'd go out and buy him something thoroughly impractical. But we'll stop off on the way home and you can get him a nice pair of kicks. Hmm. What an extraordinary thought. I don't see why. What's wrong with Phil? Pero yo no sé cómo se llama ese tipo. ¿Qué es lo importa? Es maravilloso. <laughs> oh, Pablo. Mamá, ¿qué es? Mamá mía, señor Lee. Look what I have. Hey, what in the world? What's the time he's rickshaw? See, and this is mine for my birthday. What? See, Mamma Mia, and she let see. Please, see the piano? Oh, no, no, Miss Mason. This, this rickshaw was sent to Pablo by Senor Carlton China. From China? 
Please, Miss China, but how do you know? Oh, there was a note that came with a present, Senorita, from Chung King. Please, it's oh. weird. Look, I can read it. To Pablo, for he beat me a great day from Steve. Oh, and there was something more, too. Something more? For well, you, Mamma Mia. You, none these two days a note. Yes. For Pablo's mother, to whom this is perhaps an even greater day. Oh, it's a present for you, Brenda. You not open it, Mama? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Please. Oh, it is a little doll. Uh, some kind of Chinese goddess, isn't it? Yes. Carved in jade. Oh, Lee, have you ever seen anything so... Mama, you do not like what the most things you sent to you? Oh, yes, Pablo. Of course I like it. Uh, Pablo, uh, don't you want to practice running that rickshaw of yours outside? Si, come, sir. <laughs> careful, Pablo, be careful of the door now. First I ride you, then it is the turn for you. Well, From now on, I think I will have a first day every week. A first day I am in favor. In China. He said he might go there. <laughs> Sending Pablo a rickshaw crazy. Brenda. Huh? Are you sure you're being wise about Steve? Steve gone, Lee. Out of my life and Pablo's. Well, only because you sent him away. A pacifist and a militarist aren't a very happy combination. But Brenda... Steve works at war. The idea of that, the sound of it, offends me. Oh, I know it's natural for him to talk about his job just as it's natural for me to talk about the theater. But I can't have him telling Pablo about his beautiful, shiny, new pursuit things. Pablo's father was killed in one of them. I don't want the same thing to happen to Pablo. I don't want him to know any more about war than he knows already. That's one of the reasons why I took him. To give him a chance to forget it. Well, I never thought it was the actual fighting that appealed to Steve so much as testing that new plane of his. But that's even less admirable as I see it. Developing a bigger and better fighting machine that'll kill more men faster. Oh, Steve and I had this all out, Lee. He said we were both like the North and South Pole with a world between us. And he was right. I still know he was right. Hear that? What? The air mail. Flies over twice a day. You can imagine what a help that's been. I wonder if you're the wisest woman I ever knew or even more confused than the rest of us. I wonder, too. If you ever figure it out, you might let me know. <laughs> Come on, Lee, let's find Pablo. I want to ride in a rickshaw. <laughs> of the distinguished American actress Brenda Mason. In this, Miss Mason's first London appearance, she more than justified the high esteem in which she is held by her company. Dol Paris will agree that one does not need to speak Miss Brenda Mason's language to appreciate the quality of her artistry. It is to be regretted that Miss Mason and her company ought to appear for so short a time in Rome. It is a good play. Fresh Bill House. Paul and Brenda Mason is an American. Nevertheless, she is an actress. Her place should be seen. Cancelled, Brenda. Nearly every booking left on the tour. Telegrams have been coming in ever since last night. From Prague, Bucharest, Sofia, Warsaw. Well, what's happened? Maybe after four months in Europe, they've suddenly discovered we don't speak their language. Now, this is no joke, Brenda. Oh. There's something up. All kinds of things are rumored. Ultimatums, threats. Oh, Lee, we've felt that sort of undercurrent ever since we came over. Yes, but this is different. Even the people in the streets show it. There's a tension in the air. And these cancellations, well, how do you account for them? I don't know. But it looks as if our brilliant European tour has gone a little sour. Well, the only place left for us to go at this point is home. You can take the company back, Lee. But I promised Pablo I'd show him the rest of Europe. And I want to do it while there's still a Europe for him to see. Uh, Brenda, I don't want to leave you here. There may be real danger. Oh, you go on. And don't worry. I gave Pablo a book the other day about the ancient Greeks. <laughs> and ever since he's been calling himself Hercules. <laughs> and after all, you can't hire that kind of protection these days. <laughs> Polkans. Why do they call them the Polkans, Mamma Mia? Why, because... <laughs> Darling, I'm afraid you've got me. I ought to know, but if I ever did, I'd forgotten. 
We go on to some other country soon. Oh, no? Pablo. There must be a dervish inside of you. Don't you like it here? Oh, see. It is a nice little country. But there are others I would see. Oh, Miss Mason. Miss Mason. Mercedes, what on earth? Get back to Mercedes. Oh, it has happened. They talk of war. Now it comes. Mercedes, what's happened? Tell me. The ultimatum. For weeks they have fear of it. Now, early this morning it has come. The ultimatum. They're going to fight, no? Be quiet, Pablo. Wait. Hello. Uh, this is Miss Mason. What's this talk about an ultimatum? Three hours? And what'll happen if... Oh, yes, I see. Thank you. Oh, wait. Will you give me the address of the American consulate? Oh, thanks very much. What happens, Mama? What is it? I'm going to find out. You stay here with Mercedes, Pablo. I'll be right back. Well, we can do. Appealed for assistance several hours ago. We sent out a list of the prominent Americans. Oh, Eric, or... another telegram, sir. Oh, thank you. Of course. Yes. Looks like expect. Listen, Miss Mason. The great impossible send planes, evacuate citizens in immediate crisis. State Department sending warning to powers concerned against endangering American lives. Meanwhile, take all precautions. Good luck. From Paris, my last and strongest hope. But that means we're caught in here. We can't get out. Trade soon. Government here has declared a state of emergency. Closed the frontier and grounded all the planes. And no one's going to do anything about it? Why? Do thousands of people have to be killed before the diplomats of the world choose to see that something is wrong? There's nothing more than I can... Mr. Character, I'm sorry, but this man insisted Carrick. on... Steve. Steve, come. What are you... Hello, Brenda. Where's Pablo? At the hotel with Mercedes. But how did we'll you... We'll go get them. Mr. Carrick, I'm Steve Carr, and I've just flown in from Paris. I have a plane that will carry three more passengers. You pick out the people you want to go and have them at the airport in 15 minutes. Oh, yes, Come on, I... Brenda. Steve. Oh, Steve, how, how did you know? Your activities have a way of getting into newspapers, you know, and they have newspapers in Paris. But what are you doing in Europe? I thought you were in China. I sent the plans of my pursuit plane to Washington, and they've been approved. I was on my way home, and... Uh, Brenda, what's your hotel? The Ritz. It's just down the street. Now you. I'm... Hold on there. You there. Do you want me, officer? Your name is Stephen Carr? That's right. You're the pilot of the plane that landed a few moments ago at the National Airport? I am. You will come with me to military headquarters. You're under arrest. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of Act One of tonight's Silver Theater story, Crossroads for Two. You know, for many weeks during these brief intermissions... It's been a pleasure and a privilege for me to tell you of the beauty and quality of 1847 Rogers Brothers' silver plate. And you know that this extraordinary craftsmanship is not a new development with this distinguished house that goes back almost a century. For even in the beginning, 1847 Rogers Brothers' designs had the fine, upswinging grace of Connecticut's own birches, the patient fidelity to detail that characterizes the true artist in silver. And because this loyalty to the highest ideals that endured through the years... The name of 1847 Rogers Brothers today is admittedly the most precious in silver plate. So if you've never owned 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate, why not see how gloriously beautiful it is by accepting this friendly invitation? Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, Monday, let your silverware dealer show you a complete service of 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate in the Lovelace pattern. For this is the exquisite Pierce pattern whose sterling like the tail is winning praise from women everywhere. A design of wedding ring orange blossom inspiration with graceful tapering lines and beautiful proportions. And you can now get 62 pieces of this thrillingly lovely silver plate for only $59.75. That's a saving of more than $14 over open stock price. Your silverware dealer will be delighted to show it to you and to explain on what easy, convenient payment terms you can own silver plate from the proudest house in America. America's finest silver plate. 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate. The house lights dim, the silver curtain rises, and here is the concluding act of Crossroads for Two, starring Helen Hayes as Brenda Mason. Nation of Southern Europe besieged. 
the disaster of attack by land, by air, an impending reality. And in the office of the commander of military affairs... You may consider yourself at liberty, Mr. Carr. You're fighting for this country with foolhardy at this time, but certainly not a criminal action. Criminal action? Trying to get your own countrymen out of a war. However, zone. while I can take no action concerning the flight you have made into this country, I can prevent you from leaving it. But, Commander, you must Mr. realize... Carr, this country is virtually surrounded by hostile forces. Forces mobilized, ready, and I think anxious to move. Yours is a foreign plane of a bombing type. That's true. A bomber is the only ship I could get on short notice. It was big enough. But it's unmarked. There are the enemy anti-aircraft gunners at our borders. How are they to know the plane is not our own? Leading the capital with a cargo of bombs instead of your countrymen. We'll take that risk. But we will not. One shot fired at the border may be the spark to set off the conflagration. The car, I'm sorry. You cannot leave the capital. The interview is ended. Thanks for all your help. You're welcome. Good day. Oh, Steve. Steve, what happened? Is it all right? Sure. Sure. Everything's swell. Then you're not under arrest. Whatever gave you that idea? The commander just heard I was here and wanted to offer me a job. He's heard about me, my flying for Spain with the Chinese. After all, those things get around. Steve, why are you lying? Don't you suppose I know this is a mess? Now, come on. Tell me the truth. I'm a big girl now. All right. The truth is we can't leave. They won't let us. Not until the government makes up its mind one way or the other about the ultimatum. But, Steve, is there a choice? Sure. They can surrender and receive the so-called protection of their nice, friendly neighbor, or they can fight that same friendly neighbor and be outnumbered six to one. A swell choice. But the rest of the world, surely they won't just stand by. I've got a hunch that the rest of the world is going to be looking the other way when this little grab takes place. They'll be too busy over a peace conference. You haven't changed, have you, Steve? In fact, nothing's changed. You're still quite convinced that there's no argument like a gun. And the bigger the gun, the stronger the argument. That's not a bad way to put it. Certainly a couple of million guns would carry a lot of weight in this country right now. And sanity. There's no place for that, of course. These countries couldn't get together and settle whatever their dispute may be without sacrificing countless lives. You wouldn't approve of that. Sure I would. If I lived in Utopia, I'd be all for it. But I don't, Brenda. Won't Stop you it, real... Steve. Stop it. Oh, don't you see? It's our old argument all over again. Just as hopeless, just as stupid ever. And how can I fight with you when you come all the way over from Paris to... See, it seems our wars have crossed at last. Let's call a truce. Okay. It's a deal. We'll have lunch together. All right. But before we do, I'd like to stop at the hotel and see that Pablo and Mercedes are all right. Of course. And tell them to make for the cellar if there's any sign of trouble. Oh. I'll check at the airfield and see that they're not manhandling that plane. We'll uh, meet in the dining room at the Ritz in half an hour. But, Steve... We're forgetting the ultimatum. Sure we are. Why not? There isn't anything we can do about that. And if this country ceases to exist at 3 o'clock this afternoon, I want to tell my grandchildren that I spent the last three hours of its history having lunch with America's most beautiful and talented actress. Just for that, I'll buy your lunch. <laughs> After all, I couldn't disappoint your grandchildren. <laughs> How's the farm, Brenda? Does the cow ever moo in my memory? What's her name? Uh, Hezekiah? Hepzibah. Oh, well, how is the old girl these days? We didn't get together much after you left. Every time I looked at her, I thought of you. Brenda, that's one of the nicest things you've ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is awful for her. She's sweet. I must get to her. Anne is not well and she'll worry for me. I'm doing everything I can, Doctor. Believe me. But my Anne is sick for myself. Oh, Steve, yeah. that poor old Don't man. Don't think about it. Tell me about the rickshaw, Brenda. Did Pablo like it? Did you like it? Yes. So don't get carried away. Uh, no. Oh, really? Pablo adored the rickshaw. He wanted to hire it out as a taxi. He said if the Chinese made money that way, why shouldn't he? <laughs> How did you handle that one? Uh, I told him he should keep his amateur standing and I'd raise his allowance. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other present that came from China was charming, see? Well, that's okay. It's the loveliest jade figure I've ever seen. You know who she is? No. One of the eight Chinese immortals. The only woman in the bunch. They call her the goddess of mercy. I see. And Brenda. Pardon me, sir. There'll be something else. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, but look, waiter. Yes, sir? See if you can find out what's happened to the musicians. They're dying on us. Tell them to play up. Very well, sir. Tell all you. Play up there. Oh, I see their heart is not in it, sir. Like everyone else, they're afraid. The other patrons think only of what may happen. They look at maps and listen to the radio reports. But you and the lady, you, you only laugh. Some of the others, they say to me that you're crazy. But I tell them, no, you're only American. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I suppose that amounts to about the same thing, doesn't it? Yes, madam, often I believe so. 
And, and now, sir, if you have further needs, one of the other waiters will serve you. I have permission to leave so that I may be home by three, and, and I must stop for gas masks for my wife and daughter on the way. Good day, madame. Thank you, sir. He thinks of gas masks while you tell me about the goddess of mercy. You know, it's a good thing for an actress to see the world, Steve. To find out that things like this can happen to people overnight, just like that. They don't happen that way on the stage. There's always a reason. Where's the reason here? Greed. Somebody reaching out. Somebody wanting something that doesn't belong to them. Steve, what time is it? Uh, ten or three. Well, that's silence. Wait there. Oh, wait there. Yes, sir. That's signal. A warning, sir, to make for cover. Does that mean an air raid? I don't know, madame. No one knows. Wait here. They probably want the streets clear by three, just in case. See, if we can't get back to my hotel to Pablo. Come on, there's so little time. Right. Oh. Yes, well, we'll have to walk, Brenda, all the cash. I know, I know. We just found this block of the court the square. All those troops. Home guard, last line of defense. But they look like boys. They are. Their fathers are already at the border. <laughs> You can't cross the square. It's been ordered cleared. You'll have to go around. Listen, will you? We're Americans. Sorry, sir. I have my orders. My, my son is at the hotel. I've got to get to him. Please, officer. Well, ma'am, I... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Come on, Steve. Turn his Thanks back. Nice work, Brenda. Better run, Steve. Run. Going up. Going up. Please That's all. Full car. Next car, please. All guests are advised to take refuge at once at the hotel bomb shelter. Floor, please. Nine, Nine please. Right, please. Brenda, your floor. Um, Four. Jim's been trying to get through the foreign office all day. But it's been busy, busy, busy. Oh, if it only stopped that spider. Why don't they stop it? forgot to pack his heavy sweater. I don't know how to get it to him now. Last week at this time, we were at the festival. Little did I think that... Fourth floor. Mercedes! Pablo! Pablo! Please, they're not here. Perhaps... Miss Mason, Miss Mason. Oh, yes? At last you were here. Your son and his governess are in the bomb shelter in the cellar. Oh, thank heaven. And you, Miss Mason? Uh, uh, later, but thank you. Yes. Brenda, perhaps you'd better go down. Steve, listen. The sirens. It stopped. Yeah. Everything is suddenly so quiet. What do you suppose? Steve, it must be nearly... The time has come, the war has said. To talk of many things. Oh, Brenda, it's good. Good to see you. I'd have been frantic if you hadn't come. Frantic. I followed your tour in the papers. I kept track of you. You did? Yeah. Pablo, I hope he's all right. Attention, all citizens. Attention. Steve, listen. Yeah. Attention. It's a loudspeaker out there in the square. It must be connected with the government radio. Come out on the balcony. Yeah. All citizens. At 2.35 p.m., your government sent its answer to the ultimatum received this morning. That answer was refusal to surrender your liberty. The hour named is now past, and as yet the troops massed beyond our borders have not marched. However, continued caution is advised. Maybe I was wrong. I guess the hour hasn't come. But what now? Who knows? Six to one, and they're ready to fight. How can they? They can't. It would be suicide. But these people have been independent for centuries. They want to stay that way. They've got a lot of heart. Yes, but what they haven't got is just about two million more men to back them up. Well, that announcement seems to have broken the tension. They're all out on the streets again. Yeah, and that's not a very smart thing to do. What did I tell you? Oh, Steve! Brenda, inside, quick. Oh! Oh, oh Steve, they can't, they can't. All those people, they've just... Come out! You'd better get back in and fast. You two, come on, Brenda. Oh. Don't watch it, please don't. Oh. Now listen to me, Brenda. Oh, oh, Steve. They didn't have a chance. They're helpless. Oh, look, there's our little waiter from the hotel. He's trying to get away. Why doesn't he run for oh, us? Yes, run faster. Oh, he'll never make it that look way. Look out! Oh. gas mask to his wife and his daughter and... Oh, do something! Why don't you do something? You can't just stand there! There's nothing anyone can do now. 
It's all over. The planes are going back. Uh, this is just a sample of what they can expect if they try to resist. But how can they resist? Look at that square. They'll give in. There's nothing else to do. Oh, Steve, it, it could happen anywhere that we saw up there. It could happen in New York. It could, Steve. It could. No, no, Brenda. Don't think of New York like that. Think of it as it is, as it must always be. Fifth Avenue on a sunny day. The hurdy-gurdy man. Shoeshine boys. Carriages in front of the plaza. I want to go back, Steve. I want to go home. You will. We may even get out tonight, as soon as the other troops march in. Steve, you, you've seen all this happen many times. No, not many, but often enough so that I couldn't forget it. Brenda, do you remember shouting at me a moment ago, telling me to do something? Oh, yes, it seems so, so terrible that no one was. You got mad. Well, it's always made me mad, too. That's why I've been flying and fighting these last years, working on my plane. You thought I wanted to kill people. Well, I didn't. I only wanted to prevent people being killed. I want peace too, Brenda. But I know the world as it is today. And the only way to be sure of peace in such a world is to make defense so strong that no one dares make war. I never believed that. But after today, Brenda, how can you help it? Would this have happened if they'd been able to protect themselves? I guess you're right, Steve. I haven't seen things as they are, only as I wanted to see them. You couldn't have, darling. You didn't know. You couldn't. All along, I thought you were so wrong. I love you, Brenda. You know that, don't you? Even when we seem farthest apart, I love you. I do know, Steve. Because nothing was right for me after you went away. We'll go home together. And this time, I'll stay. Oh, Steve. If you only knew how long I'd wanted to be like this. They got the wind from my ears. Where did they pee oh. at me? I do that pee at Oh, no, Pablo, you must not. Senorita, Pablo thinks he's now a soldier. Oh, Steve, it is you. Hello, Pablo. Oh, Pablo, give me that room. Give it to me. Where is my gun? I'm a soldier. You're not a soldier. You'll never be a soldier, do you hear? You are me. But, Brenda, after what we just said, I thought you... You thought I understood. And I do, Steve, I do. I know we've got to be strong, ready and prepared to fight, if we must fight. But because that's true for us, for our generation, must it also be true for Pablo and his? I don't know, Brenda. I'd like to think things might change, but... They must, Steve. I'll face reality with you from now on. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop hoping and working for something better. I see now that it's stupid to deny today. But we have tomorrow. It's the only hope there is, Steve. And it's our job to fulfill the promise of a different tomorrow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm speaking not only for myself, but for all of you when I say thank you, Helen Hayes, for making our final Silver Theater performance a truly memorable one. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, and you especially, Carlton Young and Roberto Bamberg, for your fine support. You were really grand. Helen, before you go, would you tell us if there's any truth to the rumor that you're going out to California? That couldn't mean a picture, could it? No. It's uh, for a play Charles MacArthur wrote with Ben Hecht called Ladies and Gentlemen. Herbert Marshall will be in it, too. We'll probably open in San Francisco sometime in July and then bring it here in the fall, if it's a hit. Well, I know it will be. And after you've settled down for a nice long run, I hope we'll be lucky to have you with us again on Silver Theater. I'm looking forward to it, Conrad, because I've really enjoyed appearing on these Silver Theater broadcasts. And I've also enjoyed seeing 1847 Rogers Brothers' new Lovelace pattern. It's really beautiful silver plate. Well, thank you again, Helen, and for a grand show. Good luck to you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, since this is the last Silver Theater broadcast this season, I think I'd like to say a word myself before we ring down that final curtain. Our little company here and in Hollywood has enjoyed bringing these programs to you each Sunday, and we hope that as you think back over them, you'll remember them with real pleasure, and that you, as well as we, will be a little sorry that they're all over for the season. We hope also that you'll remember the two great names that made our Sunday half hours together possible. 1847 Rogers Brothers, creators of America's finest silver plate, and International Sterling, creators of world-famous solid silver. In their behalf, we want to say a sincere thank you. Thank you, our audience, for listening, and you, our cast, who helped to make the Silver Theater program so entertaining. We hope to be back on the air again in the fall. So until we meet again, may we also hope that you will remember the words that make silver dreams come true. If you want solid silver, you want International Sterling. If you want silver plate, you want 1847 Rogers Brothers. 
both proudly created by international silver companies. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.